I am now pleased to introduce Amy Blanchett, who is the president of our BCC Student Senate. Amy Blanchett. Well, I've never spoken to a crowd as big and beautiful as this one. I just want to say congratulations to you all really quick. I have so many friends here in this audience today, and I'm going to miss you guys a lot. Congratulations, Class of 2016. Each year, the Bristol Community College Student Senate honors one of many outstanding faculty members who has affected students' education and their lives in a meaningful way. Nominations requiring detailed information about the educator's role are solicited from all potential graduating students. The selected faculty member is presented with the last lecture award. It is my honor to present to you this year's recipient, Dr. Engen Atise, Assistant Professor of Education. Hello, graduates. Congratulations. Hello, BCC colleagues and families and friends. Um, I feel like you all had your share of lectures, so I, I, I'm going to just talk to you today. I know you're kind of fed up with lectures for, for a while. Um, I'm going to talk to you about inspiration today. But before I do, I'd like to let you know that even though I'm here alone receiving this award, I feel like this was more of a collaborative effort. I'm honored because of you, your efforts, because of the efforts of my colleagues, and of course your friends and families. So thank you. Uh, going back to my so-called lecture, I'm going to talk to you about inspiration today. Because inspiration is really what brings us here today. I feel like you wouldn't be here if you were just pursuing goals, if you just had rational calculations of where you wanted to be. I believe that it's inspiration that brought you here. And uh, I have a few themes or a few premises that I think are valuable in grasping that inspiration, which I try to carry in my own life. Um, the first premise or the theme that I'd like to share with you is questioning everything. Um, I know it sounds a little bit pessimistic that you question everything in your lives, but I, I try to treat questioning as a foundation for critical awareness. Because um, we go through our daily lives not really realizing what we're doing and what that doing does. So I encourage you all to critically question your actions, critically question your, your own selves, and be aware of what's happening all around you. Be aware of what's happening in your community. Be aware of what's happening in the world. Um, I think that's an initial step for you to begin to consider crucial questions that pertain to equity, that pertain to ecology, and it pertains to peace. Now, questioning is again coupled with another theme that I really hold dear in my heart, is to emphasize abundance. We are often caught embedded in this pessimistic notion of emphasizing lack, you know, what we lack, what we need to do, what we need to accomplish. Those are all valuable things, but I think we are all powerful, we are all empowered, and we have so much in abundance that we often forget to see what we already have. And I think through abundance, you will be able to achieve a higher expectation of who you are and have higher expectations of people around you. And it makes you humble. Uh, which brings me to my third theme, theme, which is a little bit unorthodox. I encourage you all to fail. Uh, but fail in a very positive sense. Some of my students probably know what I'm talking about, but I, I am a constant failure. I love to fail, and I'm trying to fail my speech here today. As you can see, I'm not really reading. But failing can be productive. Failing, I know science folks will concur with me, is the foundation of knowledge, right? It's trial and error. You fail, you try again, you come up with a solution. But I also see failure as an active refusal of correctness. We're often consumed by this anxiety of correctness, doing the right thing. It has its place. I'm not arguing that it's, it doesn't have its place. I'm going on a plane tonight. I wouldn't want the, file, uh, the pilot to fa uh, practice failure, of course. 
I would want him to be correct. But at the same time, <laughs> failure is a foundation where you can escape that anxiety of being correct. You can escape those anxieties to explore, to experiment, to improvise. Therefore, I see failure as a good foundation for experimentation, which again leads to my fourth theme and premise of inspiration, which is to be poetic. Um, I know it sounds a little bit cheesy, but through failure, I'm hoping that you guys can improvise, experiment, take a chance, be a nomad, do something irrational, do something illogical. Again, I'm really fed up with being consumed by what is rational, what is right, what is logical, because those moments don't really take us much far. I see failure, I see being poetic, living the moment, being in the moment as really true potentials for change, for productive change. And lastly, I encourage you all to dream. You know, going through schooling, K through 12 schooling, daydreaming is, is a bad habit, right? We've all been told not to dream, stop daydreaming, don't dream, don't dream, be realistic, be realistic. I'm not saying don't be realistic, be realistic, but demand the impossible. And you can only do that if you dream. Without dreams, you have no goals. Without dreams, you have nothing to strive for. So in that sense, I always encourage my students to dream. Be daydreamers, fail as often as you can, be irrational, and those are the foundations for inspiration. Um, that's my final message to you all. Thank you. Uh, and I congratulate you on your monumental achievement. And I'd like to recognize the families here as well. You all have put a big, big effort, mental, emotional, financial effort into this monumental event. I congratulate you all. Thank you.